What's up y'all? So I just posted a physique update where I've been bulking for three and a half months and I still have a visible Christmas tree and a visible six pack and obliques. That comes down to just the weighted ab training that I do and then a few other things that we're going to talk about. So I like to break ab training down less into like obliques, lower abs and you know upper abs and more look at different functions that you should just be fulfilling in your training in general. So we'll go through those first and then talk about uh, a very common pain in the ass that we're gonna talk about in a second that you can get if your obliques or anything aren't firing correctly, which makes things firing your ass harder to compensate. So starting off, you have what I like to call like your, your static ab work. Static ab work includes everything from anti-flexion to anti-extension. So that's just anti-noodle, anti I like to say. So anti-flexion would be anything having to do with your lower back, right? So a deadlift is anti-flexion. Anti-extension would be the opposite of that. So it'd be planks. Those are planks, side planks, weighted planks, and weighted side planks. Then there's your dynamic movement. So it's things like weighted sit-ups, oblique bends, and you could do those on a 45 degree back extension. You could do them on a GHD. Uh, you can do them standing too. It's not my favorite just because the strength curve is not as good as if you were to do it on one of those two devices. But core work is not just what you see when you look in the mirror. This looks nice. And this is definitely something that I want you guys to be able to still see for the longest period possible during your bulk but everything functionally has to make sense as well and I hate that fucking term function fucking nerds have made it a meme but it's it's true when it comes to things dealing with your core and then last not but not least leg raises so you can do those hanging from a pull-up bar if you have one of those fucking uh giga brain tower things that you can you do dips and pull-ups on you can do leg raises there too now, in terms of anti-rotational stuff, one that's really intuitive that most of you can do regardless of your equipment level is a payloft press. This is really good. This alone will cover a lot of the anti-rotational benefits that you wanna kinda check off during your training program. Putting planks or any ab work in general, like in between your main exercises and your accessories is a good way to just get it fit into your program. A lot of us like, We'll throw abs at the end of a workout. We'll be like, yeah, I'll fucking do my abs and my calves at the end of the workout. And then you get to the end of the workout and you're exhausted and you don't feel like doing it anymore. Make it easy for yourself. Put it in the middle of your workout. When you fulfill all these different categories of working your abs, it's going to work them from top to bottom, side to side, front to back. You're just going to have a really thick, chunky core. Now, something that we have to talk about with regards to ab training, a lot of people ask, like, how many reps and sets should I do? How many blah, blah, blah. Treat it like any other muscle. Doesn't make much sense to do ab work for low reps, so you're not gonna be doing fours and fives and shit like that. Anything between like 10 and 20 is just most intuitive for most people and working them often. So I say, a lot of people say you can work abs every day. There's a, a kernel of truth to that, but just work them every time you go to the gym. So I train four times a week, I train my abs, by proxy four times a week as well. That's, you know, but each session, it might be four sets of anywhere between 10 and 20. In terms of periodization, I just like to say, unga bunga, beat the books, as uh, uh, Sam Sheeter likes to say. Meaning you just come in, say you do, if you do the GHD sit-ups, you do fucking 60 pounds for 12 reps. The next week, you better do 60 pounds for 14 reps and so on, and then add a little weight. You can use evolving rep ranges. It's not anything really where you have to worry about RPE too much if you don't want to. You certainly can, that's a way of doing it. I'm not saying that's wrong, but just most intuitively, you just take most of this shit to failure within like the dynamic category. Now, if it's a lower body compound, don't train to fucking failure all the time. But anything else notwithstanding, it's a good idea to train that close to failure if you're looking for something easy to progress on. And like I said, if you do that, you just beat the books, Unga Bunga style. Now, this is kind of like a, uh, a DLC tidbit, DLC golden tidbit. I'm gonna direct your attention over here to this diagram of a sacrum that I drew. 
So here's your sacrum. It's that pizza-shaped muscle with the fucking holes in it like it's an ocarina. Um, you got the top of your ass, the bottom of your ass, and then underneath your ass is the pain in the ass, the piriformis. When you have one side of your body, so say, this is gonna sound kind of giga brain, but when, for example, your obliques aren't firing correctly or you're doing, say, single leg work or even bilateral squat work and you're not bracing effectively or one side is bracing harder than the other, that's gonna cause this little sushi-sized fucking baby dick muscle underneath your ass cheek to overstress itself. And when it does that, it pinches on your sciatic nerve that runs right on top of it. What that'll feel like is a really deep pain literally in your ass that you're like, dude, why does my butt feel like that? Good way to solve that is through just making sure that you are mindful of your bracing, number one. Now, if you have an actual weakness in terms of one oblique is stronger than the other one, well, that's where the oblique bends come into play. That's where the anti-rotational work comes into play. You'll notice right away that when you do these things, one side is gonna be a good bit stronger than the other if you're having this pain in your ass. As you continue to improve this and do regressions of like your single leg work is mostly where you'll feel the, the pain in the ass come into play, you'll start to feel that pain in the ass less than less. Now in terms of regressions, it's just a word I'm throwing at you. By that I mean if you're doing like a Bulgarian split squat or you're doing a step up where there's an instability factor to it and you have to brace a little bit harder than say a single leg press, you would regress that, you know, balance intensive single leg work down to something where maybe you're doing it's called a Hatfield lunge. You hold onto the side of the rack and you just do your lunges or you do your, your fucking split squats, whatever, however you want to set it up. Or if you happen to be blessed with a commercial gym, you do your single leg press. It's not that you don't have to brace on those things. It's just that the demand on them is smaller than if you were to do a machine or do the Hatfield exercise. But that's all, man. Like, it's not very much that you have to consider when training your abs because if you properly select for your program in terms of exercise selection, you make sure you're working your abs every time and you're doing things from your static to your dynamic to your anti-rotational, you're gonna be pretty good to go. Now, if y'all have any questions or comments about this lecture or things that you would, you know, like me to add to an addendum in like the description or something, because this is just like the unga bunga shit. I'm sure there's gonna be someone that's like, well, actually, if you consider this, this is an additional benefit, the blah, blah, blah. Okay, guys, like, we're not trying to get galaxy brain here. It's just like the bare minimum that you need to get a nice chunky core and make sure that you can navigate a pretty, uh, pretty common tweak. I appreciate you guys as always. Like I said, leave me any questions you have down below. I'll talk to y'all later.